Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marí. Hola a todos, bienvenidos. Welcome to episode 15 of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to share a conversation with you that I recently had with Brittany Davis. Now, if you're wondering who is Brittany, she's probably a lot like you. Brittany started learning Spanish about maybe a year or so ago, and she really feels connected to the culture, the music, and she was really looking for a way to make consistent progress and stay motivated while she was learning. So in this conversation with Brittany, she's going to share some of her successes, some of the things that she struggled with, and ultimately what led her to really be able to make consistent progress with her Spanish. Now, Brittany is a part of our Spanish Con Salsa members only community. And if you're wondering about what that is, I will speak a little bit about that after the conversation. But one thing we do within the membership community is that we have challenges from time to time. So Brittany is actually the winner of of our last 90 day members challenge. So it was a 90 day challenge where every single week members in the Spanish Consulta community had to complete different activities, whether it had to do with listening comprehension, Spanish conversation practice, learning a new grammar point, a new skill, completing a course. We had a variety of activities, a lot of different challenges. We also did a lot with music as well. So everyone sort of had some friendly competition <laughs> and they also competed for a prize. So the prize for this round of the members challenge that just wrapped up at the end of last year was a trip to Puerto Rico. So it's a seven night stay. So Brittany actually, at the time we had this conversation, she was just a finalist in the challenge. So she didn't yet know that she was a winner. So this conversation that you're about to hear was actually the final activity of the challenge was to have a conversation to reflect on the progress that she had made um, throughout the challenge and really since she had joined the Spanish Consalsa community, as well as answering some questions in Spanish uh, as sort of a test to her skills skill level and where she was at that point in the progress she had made. So I hope you enjoy this conversation with Brittany and that it will inspire you. We're talking all about how to stay motivated and make consistent progress learning Spanish. Because I know a lot of you out there, and I know I definitely have struggled with consistency and really making Spanish a part of my day, my daily routine, and really ultimately a part of my life. I really hope that this um, conversation with Brittany inspires you and that you get some ideas on how you can find an approach to learning Spanish that really works for you. And that most importantly, you can continue with for the long haul and stay consistent. Consistent. Okay, so with that, here is our conversation with Brittany. So, Brittany, how were you learning Spanish before you joined Spanish Con Salsa? Like, I was getting a bunch of books from the library, trying to read through them. I was getting book recommendations and ordering them, and so I have a bunch of books sitting in front of me, and I'm trying to get dedicated to reading at least one of them, and then. Some, and then when it came to conversation, I was like stumped and I'm like, oh, I need to learn how to say this. And next thing I know, I'm jumping in different places in the book and still learning absolutely nothing. <laughs> so you had the classic stack of books, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. stack of textbooks that were so much fun that you just didn't get to read them ever, right? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. I'm familiar with that story. <laughs> so... So then, you know, with your stack of books that you had and really struggling to have a conversation, what was your biggest problem, you would say, at the time um, that you had with learning Spanish before you joined? I guess it would be staying motivated because, I mean, when you feel like you're, like, doing a lot, like, you're reading all of these things on how to say say certain words and you're on your Duolingo app and still not having complete sentences or you're on your... A uh, phone downloading all of these apps and getting absolutely no results from actually conversing with some somebody says something to you like really fast and you're like wait I haven't learned that yet like it was the staying motivated because I have a tendency of like like I'm a perfectionist so knowing that I am doing things to in order to speak and to do it like grammatically correct and knowing that I either wasn't able to do it or 
make sense when I did it was really disheartening. And so staying motivated was really complicated for me. Great. And how would you say that's changed since you've been a member of Spanish Con Salsa? I'd say it's changed because since I started, like literally not a day's gone by where I haven't studied. So I'd say that means I've gotten really good at being motivated. <laughs> Cause, like, yeah, I've noticed your track or your track record on habit share is like ridiculous. Like every time I check it, I'm like, whoa, she's got a streak going. So you've definitely kept up with your um, with studying on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Cause like for me, like, like with anything, like for me, like I would tell myself, I'll give myself two weeks and see how it goes. Like, that's like my streak, like, oh, I'm going to exercise before the summer, and like two weeks before I'll start. And then that's what happens. And it's the same thing with everything else. Like I give myself two, two weeks and then two weeks later, it may or may not still be a thing. And it's usually not. <laughs> so the fact that my habit share says 549 days, I think I'm like, Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's quite a record. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so Brittany, then I guess with that, what, what do you like most about being a member? I'd say being able to work with music and it's a lot more of a fun and more motivating way to stick to Spanish. Like, cause like I said, like, Usually I'm not very motivated to do anything, but thus far, like when I needed to know something, I knew, okay, so I can go to either this song to learn it, or I can go to the members page and watch this video, or I can go to the uh, pronunciation courses, or I can go to this. I know there there hasn't been something yet in the Spanish con that that wasn't able to help me, like, uh, like there's always something that breaks down what I needed to know. And that's very helpful to me. So I'm def I would definitely miss that. <laughs> What's the most significant improvement that you've noticed in your Spanish? So either something that you've noticed, or it could be something that one of your friends or someone else that you're speaking to noticed, because sometimes we're our own worst critics and we don't always realize when we're improving until someone else tells us. So is there something that either you've noticed yourself or that someone you've, ta you've talked to said, hey, you know, Brittany, you've really gotten better with this that you didn't notice until they brought it to your attention? Um, I think it's definitely a little bit of everything. Like, I can definitely say that I've noticed improvement because thinking about where I was, like, a year ago and, like, thinking about how literally the only words I knew how to say was hola and adios. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like I was I was t talking to my mom last week and it was like I was telling her I was trying to study for my meeting this weekend and in English because I was going to an English meeting this time. And each time I was trying to go over my answers, my brain kept turning it into Spanglish. I was like, so, <laughs> so I must be learning something because I can't keep one language. Straight. <laughs> so it's like. The fact that I can, like, start thinking in actual sentences and, like, switching between the two languages shows that there's an improvement there. And even among my friends, like, they've even said, like, uh, a lot of them will ask me, like, where are you learning Spanish? Like, your Spanish is really good. Like, you need to come teach me. <laughs> so it's like the um, they gave me compliments on my pronunciation and the and the being able to hold a conversation, like, true, there will be moments where I still have to a ask them, like, como, like, because, like, sometimes they go really fast, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> and so they'll slow it down, but then they'll say it to me again a little slower, and then I'm like, oh, and then I can reply, so it's like, I know I still have a lot of work to do, because, like, I still get lost sometimes, but to know that, the vocabulary is there. It's just a matter of, you know, being around it more and putting it uh, into practice more. Because I think that was like uh, in one of the courses on the member members page, it mentioned about how uh, you have passive vocabulary and then you have active vocabulary. So right. like, I think that's like uh, something that I find of improvement that I know that the vocabulary is there and little by little it's coming out as I go along so like to be able to hold conversations and know that I have the ability to do it that's definitely 
shows me that I'm improving. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And, you know, it is good when you get to get that feedback from other people, because like I said, sometimes we can feel like, oh, we're making progress, but it's so slow and we want to, you know, do better and no more faster. But when you have someone else, especially a native speaker that says, hey, you know, your pronunciation is good or you don't really have an accent, like that can really motivate you to keep going. So that's pretty cool. Okay. And if a friend were to call you and they said to you, Brittany, I really want to learn Spanish, but what would you tell them? Don't listen to what I got to say to you. Look at the raw results. The thing is, I've been able to uh, fulfill all the goals I've set forth in Spanish thus far because I literally sat down like, okay, I'm gonna try this course, and that's never happened before. <laughs> so it's like, uh, none. I think I said that before that a lot of my friends they're exactly the same way as me. They get a lot of books and they go on a lot of apps, and they still get really, really unnerved about not being able to have a conversation in Spanish. But with Spanish con salsa. I mean, you don't get that feeling of overwhelmed, overwhelmed. It's nothing but fun and music. And it's like you can have you can literally learn and have a jam session at the same time. So why wouldn't you join? <laughs> I like that. That's a good way to put it. I always say um, in the class that I do uh, on how to learn Spanish with Latin music, I always give the example of a desk, right? So I show one picture where there's a desk with like a stack of textbooks and they're all like covered up and there's a bunch of stuff on the desk. And then there's another desk that literally just has like a, um, a phone with some headphones in it, right? And maybe like a pen and a pad, right? And mm -hmm. it's so much cleaner. And it's like, what would you rather learn at the end of the day? If you've had a busy day at work or at school or hanging out with friends and you're just tired and you come home and you go, oh, now I'm going to study Spanish. Would you rather look at a stack of books or would you rather pop in your headphones and listen to some really fun music and learn at the same mm -hmm. time? And without fail, everyone always picks the option that has the headphones because who wouldn't want to learn that way? So um, <laughs> definitely, thank you for saying that. That definitely reaffirms, you know, that you can learn without having to pull out textbooks. Not that books are bad, right? Like, <laughs> I'm not saying you should be illiterate, but when it comes to speaking Spanish, what really helps people get over the hump is not keeping your nose in a book all day. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely you've proven that with um, your commitment and the progress that you've made. Um, so with that, we're going to switch to Spanish. So I'm going to switch and ask you a couple of questions in Spanish. So first, just a few things about you. And then I'm going to do what we call on the podcast, the quick fire rounds, which is five questions in Espanol. And you have to answer them off the top of your head. Okay. So lista. <laughs> ok, vamos a empezar. Entonces, Brittany, um, quiero saber un poquito de ti. Entonces, ¿de dónde eres? Nací en Dundalk, Maryland, y soy de Baltimore, Maryland, y tengo 22 años. ¿Y qué hace con tu tiempo libre? En mi tiempo libre, me gusta salir con mis amigos. A mí me gusta escribir canciones y onear a jugar deportes, especialmente basketball y tenis. Ok. ¿Y cuánto tiempo llevas estudiando español? Un año y nueve meses. Ok. No mucho tiempo, pero bastante. Y Brittany, ¿por qué quieres ser bilingüe? ¿Por qué es importante para ti aprender español? Quiero aprender español porque me ayuda a extender mi ministerio porque quiero poder hablar con otras en el ministerio y muchas personas que hablan español. Así que aprender, aprender español me ayuda a hacerlo. Y también porque me ayudará a sentir más cerca a mi mejor amiga y su familia en Florida porque son dominicanas y potrequeños. Y también ahora tengo muchas, uh, mucha familia aquí que habla español ahora y me, me ayudan a aprender y quiero entender a ellos. Bien, bien. ¿Cuál es tu palabra favorita en español? A mí me gusta la palabra 
desafortunadamente. Suena gracioso. <risa> desafortunadamente. Eso me quiero porque me, me, me cuesta mucho aprender cómo decirlo. Como tengo que pensar mucho, desafortunadamente. Uh -huh. Es muy, una palabra bastante larga, ¿no? Sí, mucho, mucho largo. Um, entonces, ¿cuál es tu canción favorita en español de música latina? Mi canción favorita es uh, Incondicional por uh, Prince Royce. ¿Y por qué? Ah, es muy bonita y el uh, uh, ritmo es muy excelente. <ríe> y dos preguntas más. ¿Cuál fue la última cosa que leíste, escuchaste o miraste en español? ¿Puede repetir eso, por favor? Sí. ¿Cuál fue la última cosa que leíste, escuchaste o miraste en español? Bueno... Escuché a la canción en español, la canción Tengo por Mili Quezada. Y ella es de República Dominicana. La última pregunta. Saca tu teléfono y traduce el último texto que recibiste al español. El último texto fue... Claro que sí. Eso es todo, claro que sí. Sí. Tiene un mensaje muy corto, muy bien. Sí, muy corto. Ok. So, thanks for participating in a quick fire round. And thanks for taking the time out to answer a few questions. Buena suerte con tu español. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Brittany. As you can see, she is full of energy and has made a lot of progress with her Spanish because she found an approach that works for her. So I encourage you again, if you're looking for some motivation and a way to stay consistent, think about joining us in the Spanish Con Salsa community. So as you know, here with the podcast, we provide a lot of information about learning Spanish, ways to do it more efficiently, um, different dialects of Spanish, learning with the culture, with music. And that is exactly what we do inside the private membership community for Spanish Con Salsa. So if you're interested in learning more about Spanish Con Salsa, go to SpanishConSalsa.com forward slash join. That's SpanishConSalsa.com forward slash join. And you get all of the details about the support that we provide to our members. So there's access to lots of courses that will help you improve your pronunciation, your conversation skills, and also learn the language and learn about the culture through, of course, music. So that is part of the community. We also have, as we've already talked about, group challenges. Our members really support each other as they're learning. And we also have a team of coaches that will help you when you get stuck or really just help you come up with a plan that'll work for you. Um, Because again, learning Spanish is something that you have to personalize and it has to really work for your particular interests, your lifestyle, the time you have available um, and really where you want to go. Right. So if you want to be fluent in Spanish because you want to travel or because you plan to retire one day in a Spanish speaking country or just because you like the music and want to chat with friends. Right. Those are all very different uh, goals and you may have different things that you need to learn and that you want to focus on. So our team of coaches will help you personalize um, a plan that will work for you um, and help you also get in some much needed conversation practice in a really non intimidating way. But again, I could go on and on about it. You can check it out on the website. All the details are listed there. So just go to Spanish Culture salsa.com forward slash join if you are interested in checking it out. Now, you will have an opportunity to try a free trial if you sign up. So if you're interested and you just want to check it out and poke around, um, you're more than welcome to do that and also have a little bit of an incentive. You know I have to look out for you guys that are listeners of the podcast. So if you put in the discount code podcast, you will see a little bit of a discount there off of the regular rate for membership. So again, 
put in the discount code at checkout. It's going to be just the word podcast, one word, and you'll see a special discount that again is exclusive to listeners of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. So that is it for this episode. I hope you'll join us next week for our next episode of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. We'll be talking more about how to make Spanish a habit. So, you know, sometimes we get caught up in reaching goals, but we don't really think about how we're going to get there and we don't put the systems in place to make sure that we make consistent progress. So we'll really kind of continue this conversation about how you can make learning Spanish a part of your life and a part of your daily routine. And I'll give you some more specifics on that in next week's episode. So with that, as always, I hope that something that you heard today will help you go one step closer from beginner to bilingual. Adios. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com. Salsa.com.